What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another video on the West Ham Way YouTube channel. Happy New Year, Hammers. I know it's not quite there yet. We have got another day and a bit to go, uh, but, you know, Happy New Year. And speaking of New Year, it looks as if that is exactly what David Moyes is going to be getting at West Ham. Um, currently, as, as I've recorded this, it is Saturday the 30th. Um, we're just a couple of days uh, after the big win against Arsenal. And some interesting comments were made uh, after that game. And uh, they came from the man himself, David Moyes. And uh, when he was asked about his um, contract situation, because obviously I think he's got about six months left on it now, um, he said, we are getting ready to talk. I don't think any of us are jumping to get it done quickly. Um, we will get it done. I don't see many problems about it. We're not in a rush. We'll get it done when we're ready. I'm enjoying my time. We originally came to make sure West Ham didn't get relegated. We've grown and got better. We're not dining at the top table. We're fine. I get on well with the board. They're thrilled. They're delighted the team are going strong in the Premier League and in Europe. Um, and obviously, at the start of this season, it looked pretty certain that the board, regardless of performances on the pitch, were not going to offer David Moyes a new contract, despite the fact he just got us our first trophy in God knows how many years, uh, despite the fact that, you know, he, he did well in the transfer market. It looks certain that they were sort of of the mindset of, you know what, I feel like David's taken us far enough. Um, we performed very poorly in the league last season. Let's be honest, if we didn't have Conference League last season or didn't win the Conference League, I think he would have been sacked. Uh, the Conference League definitely saved David Moyes' skin a lot of the time because he was able to, you know, it, it doesn't look as bad, does it? If you've got nine losses in the Premier League, but you chuck a couple of Conference League wins in there, then um, you're not winless in nine. You know, you've got a couple of wins there, makes it sprinkles it, makes it look a little bit better. Um, but obviously, yeah, that, that, that was the mindset at the start of this season, but or at least that's what the media was sort of saying. Um, and now it looks like David Moyes is not only going to be handed a new contract, but a two and a half year contract. So if it's two and a half years, that insinuates to me that it's going to be done fairly quickly because if he has six months left on his deal now, they're probably going to want to get him on a, you know, a, a technically a three year contract. So if he signed it today, he would have the six months um, plus the, uh, so it'd be like a, you know, a, a, a full, a three year uh, deal. Sorry. It'd be very weird to have a two and a half year deal, I think, uh, for the West Ham manager. Um so it looks like it's going to be done fairly soon because obviously, why would you want your manager's contract to run out in the middle of a season? But well, you wouldn't want that, would you? So, you know, he's got six months left on his contract. Given the three and a half years, uh, two and a half years, that puts it to three years. Uh, so I imagine that will happen fairly soon. Um, and, and, and to be honest, I, I don't really know how to feel about it. I, I really don't because... I think the situation with Moyes and the board has been very tenuous and as, as at least in our eyes, has always shifted back and forth. Probably behind the scenes, it's always been quite palatable. They've probably always said, look, David, we think you're the, the man to take us forward. Uh, I wouldn't say your job's under any sort of pressure at the moment. Uh, whereas we sort of, you know, think in our heads, right, you know, Bournemouth is a must-win game. If he doesn't win that, he's gone. Whereas I'm probably, I'm, I'm pretty sure the board are definitely not of that mindset. They probably do turn around and say, you know, listen, we just want to get here. You're currently here. Let's just pick it up a bit, uh, especially with the good relationship that they boast together. Um, but in terms of West Ham fans and Moyes, it's been even worse because when he first came in, he was right up there. And then in our first season back uh, during COVID, he went even higher up. You know, I mean, that, that's probably one of the, even though in this three year sort of span, we play some very good football. I think that's the best I've seen us play, the most consistent the most attacking, the most, you know, you could see the mindset. You could see, it wasn't really a David Moyes team, was it? We often, we went out just to outscore our opponents and we did it very, very well and very often. Um, the year after that, you know, was a little bit tougher. We did, we did manage to scrape European football. Obviously it was tougher having played European football itself. We got to a semi-final. I think the consensus was there's issues with Moyes, but do you know what? It's, you know, it's not that bad. You know, the football's good. European football for another year. Disappointing not to get, you know, Europe, but Conference League is something we feel like we can win and, you know, get a trophy. And then, you know, third year, sort of going on to fourth year, that's exactly what we did. We we went out, we won the Conference League and we, for the first time, really capitulated in the league. And we did, 
look like we might be headed for a pretty big relegation scrap. I mean, last year, anything could have happened. You know, Leeds, Leicester going down. I mean, that, you know, you wouldn't have thought that at the start of the season, really, with, with the way they, those teams were kicking on. Um, and then, you know, that leads us to this point here where, to be honest, my biggest problem with Moyes is that his man management is really poor. Uh, you look at examples of Mubama, Dean Garner, Ashby. Um, those are just some prime examples for me. Mubama, as it is, you know, if we're losing 2-0 to a side, 3-0, I mean, you know, he doesn't he doesn't chuck him on. You know, in, in the Cup, the Liverpool match, 5-1 down, you think, surely, you know, if there's ever a time that you want a kind of free hit, because we know that the idea behind not playing youth players is that we don't want them to, A, ruin their career with a bad performance, or B, it's quite risky to play them uh, because they might not be at the right confidence, they might not be at the right mindset, they might not have the experience, you know. But if you're losing 5-1, surely you sit there and go, Mubama is desperate for game time. I promised him some game time. I currently need to negotiate a contract to keep this player at the club. I'll probably put Danny Ings on. Like that just doesn't it just it just doesn't make sense to me that. Like that just that doesn't compute. Surely a good manager would would trust the youth. I mean, Chelsea's best player this season by a country mile has been Cole Palmer. And Cole Palmer's like 19, 20 years of age. He might even be younger than that. You know, he, he's incredibly young and he's the you know he takes penalties for them, he does everything for them, you know. You, you've got to show a bit of you know Branthwaite for Everton, immense, it's been amazing. Um, Miley, I believe it is, of Newcastle, Lewis Miley, but it might be his first name. He's come in, he scored his first Premier League goal, he stepped in for injuries, he's been brilliant for Newcastle in the cameos that he's made for them. Um, of course, I'm not going to talk about you know all this sort of stuff, but certain managers allow their players to, to do that and show the trust. And I think it's a very old fashioned sort of theory that, oh, you know, young players. Like I think he even said, like, oh, Mubama's really good. We love him here, but, you know, he's a bit young. I think, cool, but, you know, all that matters is how you're playing on the pitch. Declan Rice was like 24 years of age. He wasn't the most senior player at the club, but he was the captain and he was the best player at the club without a shadow of a doubt. Um, Mohamed Kudis is a lot younger than people realise and, you know, he's absolutely smashed it for us. So man management is one of my really big things with Moyes. I think approaches to games... Yes, we beat Arsenal and we did it convincingly. But on a different day, A, Arsenal score goals. And B, we don't get that little bit of luck. I mean, we scored from a corner and an Arsenal mistake. Now, again, I'm not trying to belittle um, that performance at all. But what I'm saying is, you know, you look at the game and you think to yourself, right, Moyes set up to frustrate Arsenal, which we did, and to keep, you know, keep them out, which again, we did. However, you know, I don't really want my team to set up hoping that they can stop an opponent's attack. I want my team to set up going for goals. And I know it's easy to say that, but, you know, if we're going for European places, defensive football just doesn't work. It doesn't get you points. It's a good way to ensure safety and scraping those points and getting the, the points against the big sides that you need. But when it comes to being a top six, top seven sides, you have to go toe to toe with teams. I mean, yes, we're sixth in the league and that's brilliant. But the reason that so many people are looking at Villa and Brighton and Newcastle is because our brand of football is so boring. It just is. It's so boring and it's so dependent on us stopping the opponent's attack. And I personally think we've got enough assets and enough attacking players in this team to be the type of team that says, guys, obviously defence is very important to us and obviously we need to defend well, but let's go out there and let's score more. Let's just go attack, attack, attack. Obviously, if we're 3-0 up or 2-0 up, then yeah, cool, shut up, shut up, whatever you want to do. But setting up games to hopefully nick a goal, it will, it will get you points, you know, it will get you some wins. You know, I mean, again, you look at the Man United game in which we played. Um, you know, we score the first goal we score. Decent, it's a decent goal. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to argue with it. Is it Paqueta manages to scoot the ball and, and get it sort of bow him? But ultimately, we get a bit lucky. It's a no, 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 no mistake. And the second goal, again, the ball gets past the Kobe Mainu and we score. We didn't play particularly well in that game. 
So we're capitalising on mistakes, which is, is brilliant. It's good. And we're, you know, keeping teams out. I mean, four clean sheets in four games. Man United, Arsenal, Wolves. I mean, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. However, it's just not the right mentality for me. I, just, I don't like this whole, you know, let's just hope our opponent makes a mistake. Let's just hope that, you know, I just feel like it's the wrong way to approach games. And I feel like if we did have a manager come in, like Eddie Howe, for instance, um, who could come in and say, boys, let's just create, play some good football, score some goals and try and outscore our opponent. That's such a better way for me. To, you know, I feel like I can, because the issue is, right, here's the issue, and this is the biggest thing, is that when you win these games, like the Arsenal game, it's brilliant, it's sweet. And it's just as sweet when you play them toe-to-toe -to -toe for 90 minutes and you absolutely go for them. But when you lose those games, there's nothing, there's nothing left out there. If you lose a game and you know that you've gone toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you've tried to play attacking football, it hasn't worked, you've not really been there defensively, you've been caught out, you basically played a bit of Ange ball, right? You come out of that game thinking, do you know what, at least he went for it, at least he went for it. But then if you come out of those games where you set up defensively to keep frustrate your opponent and get them out, and it doesn't pull off, and we do concede that goal, and then we've set up to be defensive, so we're not able to go and nick that goal, or the other team decides, you know what, we're going to shut up shop now, and you're not going to be able to get your goal, because we've played defensive football for 60, 70 minutes, and we've now got 20 minutes to score, otherwise we lose. You feel so frustrated after the match, and I think that's why David Moyes gets such unnecessary stick, um, because when we win, it's just as sweet as if we won any other game in any other way. Even if we scrape it, you know, it's still just a sweet, it's still a win, you still feel good about it. But when you lose those games, it just feels so much worse because you think, I've just spent 90 minutes watching this game of football. I might have gone to the game. I might have taken time out of my day to watch the game. I might have spent money, loads of money on watching the game. I might have missed something important, you know, plan my day around this game. Um, and, it, you know, you spend 90 minutes and your manager essentially has just not cared the way you cared about it. And that, to me, is the biggest disconnect, is that Moyes' brand of football, it gets results, but it doesn't really get performances. And I think that's what a lot of rival fans are sitting there, and to be honest, rightfully so, saying, you're sixth in the league, you've just won a trophy, you've just finished top of your group in Europe. What the hell are you guys complaining about? What the hell? Are you, what? I'd be giving Moyes a seven-year contract. And... Listen, I mean, look, it's hard to look in from a rival fan's perspective. And maybe I am being deluded. And maybe, who knows, maybe, maybe I am being stupid. And, and the next manager that comes in uh, over David Moyes is going to be worse. And we're going to have taken this all for granted and say, do you know what? Bloody hell, I want David Moyes back. Um, however, just from my personal perspective, which is all I can give, I just the brand of football just doesn't fit where we are at the moment. I think West Ham ceiling is about sixth place. I really do. I don't see us progressing more than that, at least in the next three or four years. Because I think you've got Liverpool, Arsenal, City, who are cemented in those top three places at the moment, at least. Um, I think you've got Villa, who across the season will probably get more points than us, better manager. They've got some good players in there. Newcastle as well. Amazing brand of football. Um, Brighton, I think, will have a stronger a second half of the season. They've got some players coming in good. They've had, obviously, a few uh, outgoings. They've got some new incomings in. I think Chelsea will probably have a better season next season, maybe even um, a revitalisation of the second half of the season. Spurs, can't overlook Spurs. I know that they've had some losses, but they are a very, very good side. Um, I think West Ham's ceiling at the moment with David Moyes is probably fifth or sixth, which... Don't get me wrong, I am more than grateful for. And I think us getting a Champions League place would be out of this world. It's hard for me to imagine as a, a forward-thinking West Ham fan. But, you know, Newcastle have done it. Villa could be on course to do it. It wouldn't be impossible. It really wouldn't. Um, but I just, I don't see it. I don't see that, who, which team we're going to be able to pit to get in there. I don't think we're consistent enough. I don't think we get results. I think we drop off towards the end of the season. We always start the season pretty well, bar last season. And... We just we just fall off at the end of the season because of injuries and competitions and you know squad rotation and all that sort of stuff. But with David Moyes, I just feel like there is that lack of you know, especially when we've got Tim Stider, this exciting person 
who's bringing in you know players like Alvarez and Kudus and Paqueta. It just doesn't fit our brand of football at all. I mean, Paqueta and Kudus are amazing on the counter attack, but they should be playing in a free flowing football side. And and if we want to play counter attacking football, then we need to go forward quicker. We need to have that you know guys who've got the balls like hot potato. Let's just get it up the field. I don't feel like we have that. And I feel like from everything I've heard from Moyes. He is the type of manager that will say, right, guys, this is how we stop our opponent scoring as opposed to, right, guys, this is the weaknesses in this team. Let's capitalise on it and score. You know, he, he much more focuses on the defensive side of the game because that is how things used to be. But these days, it's impossible. It really is impossible to not concede goals these days. It really is. Sim- simply because teams like Fulham will just pop up and beat teams, you know, I mean, look at the game Fulham and, and Liverpool had, 3-3, I think it was, or 4-3 in the end, or whatever it was. These teams have ability to put three or four past you on their day, and that never used to happen, you know. There, there are teams in this Premier League that are absolutely brilliant, but will get thumped three or four nil completely out of the blue. Playing defensive doesn't work these days. It's, it's a new era, um, and unfortunately, David Moyes just doesn't seem in line with that era. Now, if you're my honest opinion, I think David Moyes will sign a new contract. I mean, let's be fair, they'd be stupid not to. I mean, they really would. He, he's got us to sixth in the league and he's got us to the next stage of the Europa League. He's just won a trophy. Uh, the squad is good. The players he's brought in, to be fair, I will tell you though, Moyes' talent ID, oh, it's, it, it is really, honestly, you, you've got to give it to him. I hope that when he leaves with West Ham, he comes back as a talent scout or because every player who picks out is dynamite. I mean, McTominay, who would have seen McTominay performing the way he is this season? David Moyes wanted him. David Moyes wanted him in the summer. Edson Alvarez, yeah, he's more of a style and buy, but he's still signing off on it. Jared Bowen is one of the best players we've ever had, in my opinion. And he's brilliant. I mean, look at him, 11 goals, 11 goals. We're 19 games in, 11 goals for a West Ham player is craziness, absolute craziness. So, you know, Moyes' talent ID is amazing. I I will give him that. Um, I really will give him that. But, you know, the board would be stupid not to give him a new deal. They will give him a new deal and he will sign the new deal. There's absolutely no way you would have any leg to stand on this season if your manager managed to finish sixth or even seventh, get far in the Europa League, have a cohesive squad that is playing good football, and then you sack him and you get someone else in. There is absolutely no way you could do it. You just can't. Look at all the st- stick Bournemouth got for sacking Gary O'Neill. And, and let's be fair here. Yeah, their new manager's doing pretty well, but so's Gary O'Neill. He's taken that wolf side and he's done brilliant things for him. So I think the main thing for me personally, if I were to be in charge of it, if I had a button to say replace David Moyes, the main thing for me is who's going to take over? Because there's not many managers out there right now that you could tell me would definitively be better than David Moyes. And I don't want to take a gamble. I don't. If David Moyes is going to sit here and play crap football for the next three years, but we're going to progress in Europe and we're going to get better players and do well, and, you know, the odd, we're going to get results like Arsenal, I will take that. I really will. I'll take the, the non-attractive football for the good results and the, the good goals and the exciting players. I'll absolutely take that. But... If you ask me, where well, it's a 50-50, we can have this new manager and we'll play really exciting football, go up the table, or it's going to not really go so well and then you're going to be back down to being a mid-table team. It, you know, we can't risk it. Stability is the most sought-after thing in the Premier League, without a doubt. Leicester City won the Premier League in 2016. They were getting Europa League, they were in Conference League the season before we were, I believe. Um, they're now in the Championship. You know, it, th- th- we're talking... Eight years after winning the Premier League, they have been able... No, not eight years, sorry. Um, six years. Six years after winning the Premier League, they have got relegated from the Premier League. You know, stability is the most craved after thing in football because it is so difficult to achieve. Consistency, being able to do this across all the seasons is so difficult to achieve. So unless you can definitively say to me that a manager... He's going to come in and do a better job than David Moyes, or at least equal to a better football, then I think we've got to keep him. And besides maybe like Eddie Howe, who I think probably would, I mean, look at what he's done at Newcastle. Like he's got to be able to, I feel like that's not even a risk. I feel like he would come in and do 
wonders for us. You know, big managers like Jose Mourinho, not saying he would come, but big managers like him, um, p- p- managers like Potter, he's a risk. You know, it didn't work out at Chelsea. It's kind of done what Nuno did. Um, it is a big risk. So, you know, Will Still, big risk. Michael Carrick, big risk. I'm not sure I want that sort of manager. I think stability for Moyes is more important to me than taking a big risk on a manager that might not work out. We might be back to square one again. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think Moyes, well, he does deserve a new contract, but do you think he should get one? Do you think it's the best thing for our club to get David Moyes in for another two and a half years? Or are you at this point just, do you know what? I'm over it. I I need him to go because you want better football or or wherever it is you want. Let me know in the comments section below. Have a happy new year if I don't see you tomorrow. If I do see you tomorrow, then obviously I'll be wishing you another happy new year on the video and I will see you in the next one.